Thank you for checking out this No Spoilers movie review. This is for the Dario Argento film from 1970 called The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. This is actually considered to be one of his best films. It's his first uh, directed film, so as people say, directorial debut for Dario Argento, although he had been writing scripts for a bunch of films prior to this, none that were... Uh, um, I was going to say none that were giallo. I, don't, I actually don't know that. None that were released in the United States. They're all only recognized as Italian films at this point. So uh, this is where he became known to the American market pretty much and directorial debut. So um, you kind of, it's interesting because I haven't seen this. I had not seen this film until I'd seen a bunch of his other films that were obviously much later films of his. So it's interesting to see what his aesthetic is for later and then go back and see this first film to see how his aesthetic started so there's some things that are not there and then there's some things that you kind of see and you're like oh he still does this or that so and I'll talk a little bit more about that kind of stuff as we go on so like I said it's from 1970 I ended up this is not available on any streaming service that I'm aware of except this is the thing so I got this out through Netflix DVD and <laughs> terrible terrible I have to tell you this I'm watching the film and the very end, like the last like 10 minutes of the film, which is the, the pinnacle of what the film is, where everything comes together, it just stops. And I tried messing with the DVD and everything. There were The scratches were too bad, just too damaged. I couldn't go on. But then I figured out the whole movie is on YouTube. So I just watched that last portion on YouTube. And honestly, it looks better on <laughs> YouTube, which is ridiculous. But anyway... Um, so, let me get into this. So, like I said, this is the first direct, the, the directorial debut of Argento, and it's cool to have seen that now. Um, this is actually credited for popularizing Giallo, um, in the United States at least. Uh, so, at least that's what I hear. So, if I'm wrong on that, it's the people who told me who are wrong. Sorry. Uh, this is the beginning of the Animal Trilogy. This is something that... Argento did with his Three Mothers trilogy, but this was the first trilogy, and it's kind of interesting that the very first film he directs ends up being the first in a trilogy of films. A lot of directors don't do that. They just kind of, like, they do some films for a while, and then maybe they'll be like, oh, now I'm going to do a trilogy. So uh, this is the Animal Trilogy. So it's The Bird with the Crystal Plumage from 1970, then 1971 is Cat O Nine Tales, and then 1972 is Four Flies on Grey Velvet, which those two films I have not seen, uh, but I look forward to seeing them now. I actually might make my next Argento film, I might just do Cat and Nine Tales because that's also available on YouTube, apparently. Uh, and Four Flies on Grey Velvet is not, so I'm going to have to... I don't know where I'm going to end up getting that because that's not available through Netflix DVD either, but whatever. So apparently the script for this film was borrowed heavily from a, a novel written by a man named Frederick Brown, and the, the, the novel's called The Screaming Mimi, which I assume is referring to the bird with the crystal plumage, basically. Um, th and that was originally made into a film in 1958. So this is based on a book that had a film made out of it that is now basically the bird with the crystal plumage is basically the, the second adaptation, uh, in a sense, to that book. So, f film adaptation. So, when it was released in the United States originally, there were 20 minutes cut out of it. But now, what you get is the un unrated cut, kind of, the uncut version. Uh, and it had a PG rating, which... Well, the equivalent, then, of a PG rating. PG as a rating didn't exist then in 1970, but it's the equivalent of PG now so um which is interesting because there is some blood there is some real violence to it so for it to have been pg is kind of weird it shows you how th how like those rating scales change over time so th it wastes no time getting into things and letting you know that there's something terrible around the corner um you as people know with giallo there's always a gloved uh tr usually trench coated killer uh, and we have to figure out throughout the course of the film who it is, which usually you can't actually figure out who it is until it's said to you in the very end because it gets things get very convoluted. But, um, yeah, I mean, introduced immediately just to get you into it and be like, this is Giallo, here we go, and you know something terrible is going to happen, just wait for it. So 
I like that about it because it gets it it, na- it grabs you immediately. It's it's super awesome. I really like that. It, it's a much better way than just like kind of leisurely going into it and being like, here's some people, here's what's going on, and then oh now something's gonna happen. It's just better when they're just like danger immediately, and then you see how that fits in this stuff. Um, as with most Argento films, the locations are beautiful, and the shots of those locations are very interesting. The cinematography in general is very, very good in this film. Uh, that's a hallmark of our, all, pretty much all Argento films. But it's interesting because, like I was saying, it's interesting now to go back and see his first directed film, having seen a bunch of his later films. One of the things he's really well known for overall is using a lot of interesting lighting colors in the film. And his lighting in general, like how he chooses to use lighting, that's not on display in his first film. I guess that's something he came to later. And as I go through more of his films, it'll be interesting to see if I can pinpoint what film that started with. Uh, and by the way, if you know, if you're watching this and you know, put a comment down there because I would be interested to to see if anyone out there knows that. But <clears throat> it was interesting because that's something I know about Argento is those colors. So I was, I was really looking for that colored lighting to be used and it just was not there, but the cinematography style and the, the cool locations still there. It's, it's there throughout, which I really love. That's one of the greatest things like aesthetically. I love watching Argento films for the aesthetics, for the locations, just the directing's great and cinematography. So the overall stylish and well-directed overall stylish, well-directed cinematography is great. Like I said, um, everything just looks good. Like, and it's not just that, like the set design looks really nice. The, the characters costuming looks appropriate and interesting. Uh, there's a correlation in this film between humans putting animal death on display. Cause it's kind of like how things start behind glass. And overall there's like a, a big integration of glass in general. You see glass used in different ways throughout the film. Uh, and that's kind of something that Argento tends to do. He'll kind of like pick one aspect of something and it repeats throughout the film. And so in this film, it's glass. Glass comes up a lot in different ways. And there's kind of a focus on the display of animal death within glass. And then that translates over to humans as well. And I wonder if that's kind of trying to say, um, hey, humans are animals too. And just like that can happen with animals, it can happen with humans as well because they are also animals. Um, There's also an overall theme of animals and people trapped, like caged somehow, whether it's glass or it's some other type of cage. It's confining humans, confining animals. And I find that very interesting because it really does carry throughout the film. And that's what I appreciate a lot with directors is when they have a theme like that that just carries throughout the film so you can just continually recognize it and be like, oh, there's that theme, there's that theme, there's that theme, instead of doing it once or twice. Um, I just, I don't know, I just really enjoy that. And Argento's good at that, very good at that. Uh, There's a hilarious line in this, I have to point this out, where they're doing like a a criminal lineup and and the uh, detective said, bring in the perverts. He's just like, bring in the perverts. It's... It just seems like such an odd line, like, why would you have it in there? But it's really funny, so I just needed to mention that. Um, Once again, comments down there, if you've already seen this film, what were your thoughts when they said, bring in the perverts? It was just weird. Uh, It's crazy to see the really old, gigantic computers in this, and it makes you realize that that actually wasn't that long ago. It's like these giant ENIAC-style computers where, like, it's multiples put together and each one is like the size of a of a giant metal filing cabinet it's nuts it's just nuts because like you get ingrained in your current culture and how technology is that you just kind of forget these things until you go back and you watch an older film like this from like the 1970s and you're just like oh yeah computers used to be like that and then you think and you're like that actually wasn't that long ago so that the pace at which technology moves is insane. So that's another reason I just like watching older horror films because you pick up on those types of things. And also like societal norms, like what was going on in society at this point. Like one of the things with this film is there's some kind of um, like homophobia in it and like anti-gay uh, uh, gaze to the to the film 
which would definitely not not happen nowadays, but it was very common back then. It was just like, oh, yeah, that's just you know, that's what it is. So it's just kind of interesting that it, it, in a sense, it's like a time capsule. All these films are time capsules to show you what societal norms are and how people were and what they wore and what the themes were. Cause that's another thing with horror in general is it throughout the decades, each decade kind of has their focus of what's most scary. And it's usually very much tied into social anxieties. So, you know, that's a thing. Uh, so there are a bunch of really quirky characters that are introduced in the film, which two things about that. One, I love quirky characters in film. It, it always gives you something, you know, an additional interesting something. And in combination with the really cool locations that Argento picks, um, I just love it. it. It just keeps you engaged and, and it's fun. But also it adds a lot of potential killers to the pool for the film goer to watch. So you know, when you're watching it, you're kind of trying to figure out the mystery along with whoever's trying to solve it. Usually there's an actual detective involved and then some random person who was involved somehow. Um, so when they keep introducing these characters, and especially when they're quirky, you keep being like, oh, well, it could be this person, could be this person, could be this person. And a lot of times it's not those people, the real quirky ones. It's someone who you're like, oh, no, they seem so normal, but there's something in their past. It's, you know, that, that happens a lot with the Giallo films, but I like it. Uh, the soundtrack is weird in this. It, it, it's kind of odd, but when you think about it and you're like, oh, it was in the 1970s, you're kind of like, okay, that makes sense. But then there was something that occurred to me in that there were some moments where the, the soundtrack's very sexual in nature. Like it's a woman kind of like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, but it just sounds like very breathy and, and like light and sexual and sensual. And so I don't know if it was, it, it was an intentional thing where, where he was trying, Argento was trying to kind of like blur the lines between like sexuality and violence. Um, Cause he has kind of messed with that type of stuff in other films, but I don't know if he was trying to go for that this early, but it kind of presented to me like that could have been an intentional thing. Or maybe he was just like, oh, it, it, that sounds good at this time. I don't know. Uh, Argeno has a fixation with animals, as you can tell by doing an animal trilogy. Uh, the focus on um, the bird with crystal plumage, then cat and nine tails, house, uh, flies, four flies on gray velvet. Um, fixation on animals. He always has just animals in the films, pretty much. You know, like opera, it was like crows. Um, I think it was crows. Was there supposed to be ravens? I can't remember. I think crows. Um, Inferno, there's cats and rats. Um, just a bunch of films. He's just like throwing animals in here and there. In this one, he has birds and he has cats, which, you know, it makes sense because like cats are going after birds and there's a tie in there theme wise, thematically, uh, of, you know, the killer and prey cat and mouse you know and the detective and the killer and you know so that theme is it works in this film but it's weird because he just always has these fixations with bringing animals in and you can tell throughout Argento's films that he hates cats and there's a tie-in in this film where you're just like okay yeah he definitely hates cats but you also really get that in Inferno uh a, a good deal this is weird it's a little weird but everyone's got their thing whatever uh, it's interesting and it's an interesting and complicated ending, which is a pretty good payoff to be honest. But also when you really think about it, like applying it to real life, you're like, yeah, that's not very realistic, but it works within the context of the film. Like they explain it and they show it in a way that you're just like, yeah, okay. Within the film. Sure. And it's fun. It, it, it's a really interesting twist and there are a few twists in it and I like that. So it, it is a good payoff at the end. Um, and, but based, but leading up to that, there are actually moments where it kind of drags. I do feel like it would have been nice if it's cut down a little bit to kind of move the pacing a little bit better. But at the same time, this is kind of, you know, a 2019 type thing where people need films to be kind of like tight back then. That wasn't as much the case. People felt more leisurely. They were more apt to just take movies as they were. And if they were moving kind of slow, they're moving kind of slow and that's fine. So, you know, take it for what it is. And then the last thing I wanted to say, this was kind of funny to me. Someone gets karate chopped in it. 
And literally when I was watching it, I was watching it with my wife. Like it happens and I was just like, did that, was that just a karate chop? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, that, who does that? Like, first of all, it doesn't make sense. Second of all, the way the karate chop happened in the film, it would not have done what it did. And if you've seen this film, you know what I'm talking about. Put it in the comments down there. What did you think when the karate chop happened? It just, it was funny to me. It was very laughable. I was just like, seriously, someone just karate chopped? Like, weird. <laughs> okay. But, you know, it kind of adds to the quirk and the the interest of the film. Just like bring, it, bring out the perverts. Uh, you know, there's always interesting things getting thrown in, especially with Argento. He's an interesting dude. So that's my review overall of uh, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Um, enjoyed this film. I'm actually doing a list of my top Giallo films. I haven't seen a ton of Giallo, but I'm trying to watch a bunch. So you'll see more reviews of Giallo on here. Um, I wouldn't put The Bird with the Crystal Plumage at the top for myself. I liked Blood and Black Lace by Mario Bava more. I also liked Deep Red by Dario Argento more. And I actually liked Tenebre by Dario Argento more as well. Um, all those movies I just mentioned, I have reviewed on my channel. So if you want to see reviews for those, just look for them. Uh, and I think I'm actually going to make a playlist on my YouTube channel that has the one for all Giallo and one, I think for all Argento. Cause I've done, um, I've done a bunch of Argento Giallo, but then I also did Inferno and then eventually I'm going to do Suspiria and a bunch of other ones. So those playlists will be, will be good. People seem to like when I review Argento, but anyway, Thank you for checking this out. You could really help me out, though, by hitting that subscribe. Uh, that's your way to pay me back. It's totally painless. It takes you like a second. I don't make money on this. Doing it for fun, throwing it out there. So please help me out. Hit that subscribe. Uh, and put comments down there. I just want to talk about these things. I'd really be interested to find out what people's takes on this movie are because obviously mine is my own take, and you may have a very unique take on it. So let me know. But thanks so much for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.